Hey y'all, Bob with Million Mile Garage. We're gonna get the crankshaft stuffed into this block today. This is our 331 stroker, We're working on a Ford 5.0. I uh, got all the Cosmoline cleaned off, so all the journals are nice and clean. I got all the uh, bearing caps cleaned up pretty good. I guess that's, that's the one where the uh, oil pan lip goes. I got that all cleaned up really nice. All these are good to go. Got the ARP fasteners cleaned up. We're gonna reuse these from the last build. Um, we just need to put some uh, ARP Molly lube on them. I got a tube of that that's supposed to arrive this afternoon, but I think I have enough to put on just to do these 10 fasteners today. So uh, let me get this stuff out of the package and uh, we'll get the uh, inserts in the block. We'll get the crank dropped in and we'll check the uh, clearances on that and we'll be well on our way. Okay, we got all our new inserts in on the caps. Just noting the, uh, the center bearing, the thrust bearing. There's a little bit of damage to the surface from the way they were packaged. You can see that right there, those lines. But I can't feel it with my nail. And I know this soft uh, material that's on the top is very easily scratched. So that's nothing. I'm not going to worry about that. That's fine. You see there's a little bit of damage right there as well, the way those uh, bearings were crammed together in that plastic packaging. But no big deal. This material is really soft. It's not going to hurt anything. I do want to make sure that I have these wiped off perfectly clean and then I have plenty of assembly lube on them because I don't want to embed any dirt into them or anything else that doesn't need to be on them. But uh, all of those pressed in really nice. I have some uh, melling assembly lube left over from when I did uh, a lifter repair on the duster three or four years ago. I'm just going to put some of these on the uh, caps and just kind of smooth it around a little bit. And uh, we'll put a dot here and here. We'll get these, uh, I'll smooth it around with my finger and stuff. Um, I'm just going to set the crank in. I don't really plan on spinning it much. I basically just want to get it in place and uh, I'll just make sure there's enough, enough lube on here. We don't scratch any bearings or anything. And I'll put just a little bit on the crank journals as well, just for doing the, uh, the plastic gauge. Um, probably helps to have it something on there that's a little, uh, slippery so that the plastic gauge won't stick to the uh, either the journal or the um, the bearing surface. So we'll do that. Okay, I got my plastic gauge here and we got a pretty nice print. Uh, we also got a nice print on the cap as well, but it's going to be easier to read off of the crank. And you see it leaves a little bit of an outline kind of where the oil is, which kind of tells me that's probably closer to what it, what it uh, what we're going to try to read. And I'd say one thousandths is way loose. Weight or weight it doesn't match. One and a half. I think we're somewhere between two and one and a half. All right, you see I got a piece of it set right in there. And I'm just gonna do the same thing I did over here and see what I get for a reading. Hey, I'm just coming in here again. And uh my poor eyesight. I get this thing to focus. I'd say we're closer to one and a half than we are to two. We'll look at this journal over here as well. Yeah, probably closer to one and a half, I would say. All right, all of these look pretty much about the same. And in case you guys were wondering, I didn't bother uh, miking the journals because if all of them are reading one and a half thousandths, which I, I think I've dem demonstrated that here, um, they're all very consistent. And I would say that the odds of them not being round, in other words, you know, hey, yeah, plastic gauge can show you what the clearance is static, right? But what about, you know, if you have a high spot on the crank journal? Well, I would say the odds of all five of those journals, um, if, 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 if there was a machining error, right, um, that probably would have shown up checking all five of those at one time like I did. So I got a real high confidence factor that the crankshaft that I got is machined to as good or better than what the factory tolerances ever were. And I think having basically all five of those measurements show up to basically the same one and a half thousandths, I think, confirms that. I think I'm a tad tight on this. I know I don't have the top cap on yet either, but uh, I come in here 
I move this crank back. I'm about three and a half. I can maybe wiggle it a little bit. That might be just like maybe what, a half a thousandth tight? And maybe that's set up too, I don't know. But I think the, the range is four to eight thousandths. I'm about three and a half. I'm gonna say that's probably within the realm of, yep, we'll let that go. Hey, and just for a little leak protection, I like to put a little dab of RTV, any color will do. Uh, I put it on the cap and it's going to basically leave a print from about here over. The main area I'm worried about is this spot right here on the edges on each side uh, where it can leak past the rear main seal. Um, just a little added measure of leak protection. Okay, I've got the uh, rear main set in place. You can see where it just schmoozed out just a little bit around the edges. And I haven't torqued the fasteners down yet. And I'm going to go with the instructions say, and it says, let dry for one hour, then tighten the torque specifications. Primatex Ultra Gray. Who knew? Okay, we're right at four thousandths in play on the thrust bearing. And I'll show you, demonstrate. I'm going to come in right here and move this over. See that right there? Oh, let me pick the other side here. Here we go. We're going to take this. I'm going to push the crank forward. And there's zero with no tension. And then I'm going to come back in here, right there, and move the crank the other way. You can see that. I'll take this out. And we should be right at four. Yep. And if y'all are wondering how I did it, I did it per basically a shop manual. I had an old Haynes manual for a Ford 5.0, and it says four thousandths is the minimum. It gives a range of four to eight. So after I had torqued all the other mains down, I made sure that I had this main sitting partway, halfway in its range of travel before I even set the cap in. That's how I did it. And then I torqued the cap, oh, to maybe 15 foot pounds and then backed off and then torqued it back down to five, um, making sure I kept the cap as centered as I could so it's lined up with the other half of the, the bearing shell. And then I took and tightened it up to about, uh, I guess I tightened it to maybe seven or eight foot pounds and I took my handy rubber mallet, whatever I did with that. Oh, here it is. And I just took and whacked it really firm this way a couple times and then with the dial indicator off I whacked it really firm that way and you can see by me whacking it I'm actually moving it a little bit so anyway so I feel pretty confident that the halves are lined up because if the ha halves aren't lined up perfectly um, you might have one half act as a scraper and actually scrape the wheel off the crank which is probably not a good thing you want those bearing halves lined up so that thrust bearing is perfectly smooth on the parting lines on each side there we go. As always, thanks for watching. Next week, we're going to set the gaps on the piston rings, and we're going to check them in each cylinder bore and mark them before moving on with the uh, final assembly of the engine.